This is Cole Rasmussen with my female hormone and menstrual cycle video for Biology 192 at Grand Canyon University. In this video, I will be discussing the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle and the hormones involved in regulating the menstrual cycle in general. I want to first point out that in a sexually mature female, everyone is always in some stage of the menstrual cycle, which is on average a 28-day cycle. And for the purpose of these graphs, we will maintain to a 28-day cycle. And there's always something. The ovarian cycle refers to what is happening in the ovaries in preparation to release an egg for potential fertilization and what is happening in the uterus to pre in preparing to receive a, a, a fertilized egg and the development that could then turn into an embryo or a fetus. Looking at the ovarian cycle, you can break it down into three phases, the follicular phase, the ovatory phase, and the luteal phase. In the follicular, or the, uh, follicular phase, you have eggs that are developing that then move from a prim primordial phase follicle to a primary follicle, then to a secondary follicle, and, this, and you have these cells that are developing here on the outside that is going to then provide nourishment and growth for what is then the oocyte on the inside to continue to grow, to develop. These are all stimulated by LH, which is luteinizing hormones, and the follicle stimulating hormones, or FSH, come from the anterior, anterior pituitary gland in the brain, secreted into the bloodstream, and then enter uh, through the circulating blood through the ovaries, and you have this developing follicle. At the point in which the, the oocyte breaks free of the follicular cells, you have a spike in what is this LH. And when that happens, that is the day of ovulation. It's a one-day phase. This egg is now going to move into the uh, fallopian tubes or the uridian tubes and make its way to potentially be fertilized in the uridian tubes to then drop into the uterus. Um, but the rest of this shell then moves into what is this luteal phase. This uh, shell now is what's going to excrete um, estrogen and progesterone in females. And you can see the correlation on the day of ovulation, how at the spike of LH, you have a spike in the estrogen that then is working on preparing um, the uterus to potentially receive a fertilized egg to be able to give nourishment to a, an egg if it's fertilized and then settles into the, into the lining of the uterus. To finish up here first though, in the luteal phase you have um, it's this corpus luteum that is then going to secrete the hormones and the progesterone. And as it moves through its phase, um, your the female body will then absorb these leftover tissues. The shell of the follicle still remains and becomes the corpus luteum, which will become responsible for the production of estrogen and progesterone. And, uh, and you can see then too, as, as these kind of dry up and then get absorbed into the body, how looking at the uterine, uterine cycle, how those levels drop off and then will start again. Follicular cells secrete some progesterone during the first part of the menstrual cycle. During the second half of the cycle, cells of the corpus luteum secrete abundant progesterone and estrogen. Consequently, the, the corpus luteum forms the blood concentration of progesterone sharply increases. Progesterone causes the endometrium to become more vascular. It also stimulates the uridine glands to secrete more glycogen and loop lipids, um, bringing about the secretary phase. Endometrial tissues filled with fluids containing nutrients and electrolytes, which provide a, a, a favorable environment for an embryo development. High levels of estrogen and progesterone inhibit the release of LH and FSH from the anterior pituitary gland. Consequently, no other follicles are stimulated to complete development when the corpus luteum is active. However, in the secondary oocyte released at ovulation is not fertilized, the corpus luteum begins to degenerate on about the 24th day of the cycle, the day out of 28 days. Eventually, connective tissue replaces it. The remnants of such a corpus luteum is called a corpus albicans and is eventually absorbed by the body. When the corpus luteum ceases to function, concentrations of estrogen and progesterone rapidly decline, and in response, blood vessels in the endometrium constrict. This reduces the supply of oxygen and nutrients to the thickening endometrium, and these lining tissues soon de disintegrate and sloth off. At the same time, blood leaves damaged capillaries, creating a flow of blood and cellular debris that passes through the vagina as the menstrual flow. This usually begins about the 28th day of the cycle and continues for three to five days while the concentration of estrogen are relatively low. And then the cycle will begin all over again as estrogen progesterone drops off and LH and FSH begin to create the next follicle development in the ovarian activity. And I hope this is helpful and completes all the required information for this assignment. Thank you for your time.